Hello. Just for the fun of it, I've prepared for you a pelican this time. Now let's go back to business. I would like to introduce a command called timeline block to symbol. If we look at the help file, it says timeline block to symbol converts a selected block of frames to a symbol preserving its relative position and layer structure. There are two modes, single frame mode and timeline block mode. The shortcut key is shift plus F8. There are slight differences between the two modes, so I'd like to walk you first through the single frame if we make a vertical selection across multiple layers on the timeline and press shift plus F8. This is the dialog box that appears here. We give the symbol a name. We get a confirmation that the operation has completed successfully. When we double click, we can see inside the symbol that the whole layer structure has been preserved intact, layer colors and layer names. From here onwards, you can add extra frames and keep animating inside while treating the whole entity on the outside as just one symbol. Just in case, if you're unfamiliar, the default flash behavior in converting multiple layers to a symbol would be to collapse every single thing onto one layer. In this particular case, where everything is symbolized, we can right click and go distribute to layers and we'll end up with a kind of usable layer structure. But if these were raw vector shapes instead of symbols, then we'd be in trouble because they would all intersect. Now let's look into timeline block selection mode. In theory and most likely in practice, the command should be able to even cut through tweens just like this. It should be able to chop these tweens, preserve the easing and convert this kind of selection to a graphic symbol indistinguishable from the original animation. But usually I tend to not push it that far. I would normally do just this. Make a clean cut selection that starts and ends with a key. If I press Shift and F8, I need to type in a name and then OK. What we end up with is a single layer containing a whole pelican animation completely intact. If I double click, we can see all the layers are there with their names and so on. Finally, I will use this container several times to add a few different effects. Let me just rename this. As you can see, I have a mask from before. I will duplicate this layer and then mask the copy. Then I will give this underlying version a bit of a tint. I'll choose a green color to make it look as if it's an underwater part of the pelican. So this is my mask which only reveals the upper portion, the one that's above the water. If I lock them we now have a copy of the pelican which has been tinted to represent the underwater part and we have the over the water version which is unmodified. I will also try to make a reflection so I'll duplicate the layer again 
and move it here just below. So this is on the water. This is reflection. This is mask for reflection. And the reflection needs to be flipped vertically, just like this. So if we have a reflection that's flipped vertically, and it probably needs to be tinted further to make it less prominent. Not the best job ever, but nevertheless, if we go outside and look at the whole scene, could be better, but it's not too bad. Okay. That's all. Thanks for watching.